What is up everybody? Robert back again with another video and we are coming to you from West Texas and it is freezing cold out here. It's 30 degrees this morning. Woo, that wind's cold boy. Mm. And as always, if you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead and uh, turn on that bell notification so that you guys get notified every single time that I put a video on here. And also, make sure you hit the thumbs up. All right, guys, so today and probably for the next two days, what our plan is, is the same old, same old, is we're gonna be pulling water from the battery. As you can see, there's my level oh, right there. There's the level. All right, so we're about halfway full now. We're gonna go ahead and pull a load of water and that's what we're gonna be doing for the next two days. Uh, coming back over here, if you guys haven't watched my last videos, I usually help my buddy out when he goes on days off. Um, help him out with his batteries and the stuff that he takes care of because I'm really the only one that can do it. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just full of greatness and stuff, you know? All right, guys, I know in my last video I said that I was gonna do a headset giveaway and guess what? We have come up with the winner. Appreciate the comments, everybody who commented and uh, we're gonna be doing more giveaways. So basically with the giveaway, what I decided to do is go ahead and download a randomizer app on my phone. And basically I took everybody that commented and I stuck your names in this uh, this wheel that you spin and uh, basically spun the wheel. All right, so our winner of our giveaway is going to be Damien Dozier. Congratulations. Uh, here is the results for our random uh, giveaway that we did this week. All right, so Damien, congratulations. I'm gonna be reaching out to you to get your information of where I can send this to. All right, so I appreciate all of you guys that participated and we're gonna go ahead and do some more giveaways. Um, so go ahead and uh, keep commenting and everything and hopefully uh, we can get your name out there and we can get you to win something, all right? All right, guys, we are pretty much loaded all the way to the top. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this pump off. Uh, shut this thing off, because we don't want it to run. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, on these locations here, which is pretty crazy, let me flip the camera around. So, you gotta run a vent hose. Um, just some oil field safety so your truck don't run away with you. Because when you do load, produce water out of those tanks over there, there are a lot of gases that get trapped right up there at the top. Well, basically your pump is pulling air out basically out of the tank, all the extra air, and filtrating through the pump, the scrubber, and then it comes out this vent line right here. So, basically the concept of a vent line is that if you don't have one, then all those gases kind of seep out right there underneath the truck, and it could make the motor go kaboom, or it could just run away with you. And old companies think of everything, don't they? Oh my gosh. Look at that dirty floor. Boy, I need to clean my floor. It was pretty muddy yesterday. Got my hay dudes there. Boy. Uh, turn the pump off. You just push the clutch in. Little switch right there. And then it's off. Ride. Let's ride, baby. <laughs> Man. there all right we are loaded so now what we do is uh we'll take this one to the disposal pull one out of here right there we got some big holes over here on this location pull my window up uh, do the old school right here oh the roll up window but this one is super tough to roll up oh my gosh all right so anyway head to disposal now yeah, this location's got some pretty big holes over here. You gotta kinda watch out for it. You don't wanna, I don't like running through them. Uh, it's not really good for the truck suspension, especially with this much weight on here. So I try to be careful about where I put this truck and what I run over out here, all right? Let's 
so it's not just all free for all, just all of pulling butt down a road or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, guys, oh man, headed to the disposal. I know it gets a little bit boring out here just looking at leash roads. <laughs> That's all we got to look at though, baby, just leash roads. I mean, it's it's a, it's a good paying job, but it's a, it's a boring job at the same time, as, I could, uh, as you can tell. So make sure my hoses are still back there. And sometimes coming down these leash roads and stuff like that, you uh, you get all these bumps, how bumpy it is and everything, and then uh, some of these hoses will fly out of the trays. So you just got to be wary of that. Um, and because uh, I've had it happen quite a quite a few times out here, so so I'm always checking my mirrors and everything, making sure everything's still back there and still in its place. So anyway, guys, in this video, I was wanting to uh, kind of tell you about um, how we get paid out here. Um, as far as how in the hell do you work 130 hours a week or 107 hours a week when truck drivers are only allowed to work 70 hours a week and uh, so this video I wanted to explain that to you guys so that's what I'm going to be doing so as soon as we get up here and get off loaded I will uh, go ahead because on the next load I got I'm gonna have to end up waiting for some water uh, so be perfect time to explain all that to you guys so that's what we're gonna do. Cattle guard, boom. Yeah, watch out for the cattle guards. It will get you. So I wanted to get you guys some footage of these rigs out here. Oh, look at this bumpy area right here. Yeah, man, you got them three rigs right there in a the line. That's all Occidental Petroleum. That's Oxy for short. Um, and they are they are drilling like fools. They got these three right here, and then they got another four. If you go back another four miles where we came from, um, and then I think up in Carlsbad they've got some more stuff going on up there with XTO. So um, yeah, I mean this is the place you want to be in 2023 for sure, or at least one of the places. You know, as the trucking market gets hit uh, or continues to get hit with these low rates and stuff on over the road. Uh, freight and all these brokers trying to take advantage of drivers this year um that i'm telling you man this is this is one of the places that you want to be at uh to make some money um you know you can have a great year out here i know i've had i've had great years and i've had bad years out here but i believe that this year is going to be a good year for uh for the oil field so um yeah man all right almost to the disposal baby right here coming out oh she didn't even stop at the stop sign didn't even want to stop right there super dangerous <laughs> anyway yeah this road's a little bit uh gets a little bit crazy during the day um, usually it's a lot busier than this so it's it's kind of hard to make left turns and everything so just be mindful of that but that's the disposal right there in the blue tanks so that's where we're gonna go oh follow this old boy in here Cattle guard. Watch out for them cattle guards. They'll get you every time. Get you every time. We'll pull up all these. Golly, man. There's a lot of people up here. So we're going to be waiting a little bit. Call these boys in here. Man, we got a Targa up here. They mostly haul like chemicals and stuff. And then uh, the rest of these guys will pretty much produce water. Some of them might be coming from a drilling rig, but they're really not supposed to dump any kind of drilling fluids here at this disposal at all. So hopefully, see what I'm talking about, man? The big old holes like that? Jeez Louise. Those things are huge. Mm, well, I'll tell you what, let me do this. I'm gonna turn around over here. See how that that's a little better. How about that? see if that's a little better I think it will be we'll see though I'll show you guys what I'm doing all right let's make this turn yeah 
like I said, man, these holes, dude, are, are a little ridiculous. Especially when you got so many trucks coming in and out of here. It should be. It, it, it really tears everything up. But, yeah, we'll get right here and see how he's in that line for number four. I'll go into number three behind this blue truck. Go ahead and set it up like that. Yes, sir. We'll do that. Finally, it's our turn. Man, it took forever. Sheesh, about 20 minutes or so. That's a little bit longer than, than normal. Lined up there, and that's money right there, boy. Oh. Uh. Four, three, four, two. There we go. But anyway, come up here. One, two, eight, back. Twenty-five. Yes, purpose water. And damn. Right, we got good pressure. All right, we'll let this thing offload a little bit. We'll check it in a minute. Look at that. Check that in the truck. I need to get one of those, uh, those like little things you can mount to the step to clean your boots off with or something. Man, that's a dirty floor. Look at that. Nasty. The focus. All right, guys, we should be done. Let's go ahead and check it. See if we're empty yet. I'll tell you what, Bo. Let me go over here and clean all this stuff. Man, look at all that OBM on the floor. Oh, it looks like tank bottoms. A little oil in there, too. Yeah, we are empty right there, as you can see. Another way you can tell you're empty is uh, your pressure will be closer to zero. So you can open this one up, and there ain't no pressure in there. So there you go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get another one, guys. We're about to be in location right now. As you can see, there's sort of the, uh, the rigs I was talking about. They uh, actually pulled that other rig out, so there's only three rigs here now. We got this one right here, which is a PaceX rig. It's a neighbor's rig, and then you got the h &P rigs down there. All right, here we go. Here's our location. Right, Chiel, let's get pulled in here. Ooh, put a speed bump here. Oh, man. Man. That was a bumpy speed bump. Hey, the speed bumps will get you too. So not only do the cattle guards get you, but the speed bumps will get you also. Come no. on. So not every battery produces oil. Now this one does produce oil, but not as much. Uh, what this one is, is called a gas well. If you guys don't know, not only uh, whenever you pull oil out of the ground, um, you not only get oil, but you also can get gas. And you can see right there, that's a flare. They're actually burning some gas right now. Set our cone out here. It's kind of stupid, but Apparently they like cones, so let's throw our cone down there. All right, let's go check this. It's because before I was too far away from the header, I don't have a hose that long, and I really don't want to hook up a hose that long, to be honest with you. Oh, perfect. See? Just like I want it, baby. Right there at that 90. All right, let's get hooked up. This 
this valve here a little butterfly valve in there you just want to you can go the other way don't be an idiot Robert all right let's see all right that one's turned out now we just open our valve here Now, right after we get all that done, it's best to come back here and check your levels so you can see exactly how much water that you got in the battery. This one right here is about two tanks. So we'll come up here, get our HMI. This is called HMI right here. All right, water tanks, about 10 feet. So pull about two loads off of this thing. A nasty floor. Man, dude, I need to clean that thing. All right. Let me get rolled up here again. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wait for that to load. And once that's loaded, we'll go and hook and then uh, take that back to the disposal. So, anyway, guys, um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was... How in the hell are you making 130 hours a week or 107 hours a week on a normal week or you know 98 whatever it may be when you can only work 70 hours as a truck driver legally and uh, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that um, and it really comes down to this thing right here your ticket book all right so with the ticket book um, out here in the oil field, you, there's a couple different ways to get paid. Um, one of the ways, just one of them, are going to be what's called ticket time. And this is your bread and butter out here in the oil field. And basically, whatever load that you run, like say on the water side, every load that you run is worth an uh, amount of hours. So one run, uh, let's say it's, uh, I don't know, about maybe 10, 10 miles or so round trip, right? Um, that would pay like five hours, right? So let's say that that trip is uh, Takes you ten miles. Let's say it takes you about two and a half three hours to do it um, You would get paid five hours for that. So what we call that is a gain time um, so basically the, the more loads you do in your time that you have the truck or the time that you're driving for that day The more money that you're gonna make the more hours that you're gonna make and that's that's the bread and butter of water hauling now, on the other hand, there is another way that you get paid, which most people are aware of, is hourly. Um, and hourly is not really ideal for, let's say, what we're doing, um, but it is another way we get paid. And most of the time, hourly jobs are going to be mostly, it's its its mostly like pulling bottoms or skimming oil or, you know, dirty, dirty jobs um, along the production side, which is, this is what we're doing is production work. Uh, basically, the well is in production. It makes oil, it makes water, it makes gas, and that's what we would call production. Now, another aspect that you would get paid hourly would be on the drilling side or the frack side. And basically, drilling is what it sounds is they have the drilling rigs like we have next door, um, and they drill the hole. Um, and, and you know, they use a lot of water trucks when they do that. They haul brine in, which was what we were doing yesterday. They haul water out, they haul mud out, um, they haul all kinds of different fluids. And most of the time, on a drilling rig is you're gonna be paid hourly. So hourly is not really where it's at. That's not where you make the most money at. The most money that you make out here is gonna be ticket time. All right, now another way that you would get paid, this is the third way that you would get paid, is by the percentage of the load. Now, a lot of different companies pay different percentages. Most of the time it's Let's say they're getting paid a thousand dollars for a load and they're going to pay you like, I don't know, 20%, right? So they're going to pay you $200 to do that load. Um, so that's another way. And, and most of the time you would see this kind of pay on, let's say, hole in pipe or drill string or uh, like a lot of flatbed work, or you might even see it on the sand side. And I think the sand side, you would see it more because that's how we used to get paid when I was doing sand. That's most of the reason why we get paid uh, so many hours per week and, uh, and, and most of the time running legally uh, for the most part. Now, when it comes down to being legal, okay, 
A lot of companies out here are not legal. I'm just gonna say it out loud. I mean, I, I'm not, it's it's not a secret is what I'm trying to say it, it, that a lot of companies run illegally. A lot of the uh, state troopers, the DOT, they all know, they're not stupid. They know that a lot of companies are still running illegal. And not to say that um, that I'm not always legal all the time. I'm, I'm usually, I try to stay legal as much as I can. Let's just say that. Now, another aspect about staying legal um, is with, uh, with the oil field, whenever you're running in the oil field, your hours of service are now oil field exempt is what they call it, oil field exempt. So basically, if you do anything with one of those wellheads out there, you are part of the oil field exempt rule, okay? So basically what that means is that, let's say you pull up to a well site and you are on that well site for five or six hours, right? You could be just on standby time or doing something out there. Anything to do with the well site or the actual well or production side of it, or let's say you're at a drilling rig and you're there for six hours. Basically what oil field exempt means is that you're completely stopped um, your clock. What I mean by stopping your clock, you know how whenever you guys log on to uh, go on duty to do a pre-trip, and once you do that for the day, your clock continues to run until you run out your 14 hours. Now, when you're at an oil, oil well site, or you're actually on a location like we are now, um, basically they stop your clock is because if you're sitting there for six hours, um, you, you, you're not allowed to sleep on location. Like it, it's very, very dangerous to actually go to sleep on one of these locations. Just because of the release of gas, there's a chance of an explosion. Um, all kinds of different stuff could happen out here. So they really don't want you taking a 10 hour break here on a well pad. So they would rather stop your clock if you're here on standby for six hours or something, have your clock stopped. That way you can then go on duty, do, you, do what you gotta do out here and then you can leave. That's one reason why we have an oil field exempt rule only for an oil field. Now people have asked in the past um, if, uh, if you're hauling pipe out here, let's say for the pipeline or something, are those guys oil field exempt? Or let's say even if you're hauling materials out here from like a, a somewhere you know out of state or something, um, and you're hauling it to an oil field company, are you then oil field exempt? And the answer would be no. And a lot of drivers have this misconception that if I'm going out to the oil field, then I'm oil field exempt at this point. And that's not that, that's not the truth. Um, you actually have to be on location at a well site for standby for so many hours. Uh, most of the time, those guys that are hauling stuff out of state are usually in here, drop their load, and they're out. Now, another thing you need to know um, is that when you're oil field exempt, and let's say you're on a well pad, um, you are getting paid every time that you are waiting at a well site. So if I'm sitting here for six hours, eight hours, or something like that, I'm being paid to sit here and wait for six to eight hours. Okay, and sometimes guys would sit here, in the, in, well, in the past, not anymore so much, um, they would be out here for days sitting on a well site. Um, and, and they would get paid for every hour that they were here. Their regular rate, the rate wasn't cut in half, like say like a detention time, like I'm gonna pay you like, you know, 12 bucks an hour or something to sit here. No, they would get paid like say, you know, I get paid $24 an hour. I would get paid $24 an hour no matter what. Now, as far as the job in the oil field goes, um, you know, there's there are days where I'll end up working over my 14 hours, um, and, and and most of the time it's 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 more so than not. Let's just say that I do get some rest at night, but a lot of the driving that I do is is mostly out here on the leash roads. There's not a lot of DOT, there's not a lot of cops or state troopers and stuff to really enforce the rules out here, um, and that's a reason why you know I, I put in like 18 hours. I mean, I put in 20 hour days before. And you know, when I first started out here in the oil field back in uh, 2014, I, uh, you know, we were putting in 24 hours a day. Like you would sleep whenever you could, you know, whether you were loading, you might get about 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there. It really just depended on how your day was going. But that's how we used to run. Now, more so, they want you to get your rest. Um, but there are still companies that will overwork you and that is a big possibility out here. Um, and I still see it now with companies overworking drivers. So guys, basically what you need to know about the oil field that if you do come to work out here, you are going to be put in a ton of hours. So if you're not scared of work and you like to work outside and you, you kind of enjoy it and you don't mind it very much and you don't mind the long days, 
this might be the job for you. And I believe that, you know, going into 2023 with all the rates are, you know, pretty much plummeting and, you know, diesel prices are pretty high right now. I think being a company driver in the oil field is probably the way to go, or at least one of the ways to go, in my opinion. For the most part, the companies that we work for, you know, they, they told us that uh, about two months ago that they would have work up to five years from now. So they, they're not going to stop. They're not slowing down. Um, basically, it's going to be pretty busy, at least for the next five years. So, I mean, if you're looking at trucking to get into trucking to make some money, uh, maybe pursue some other goals that you might have. The oil field might be a good place for you because this is really the only place I know that you can make you know, a pretty substantial amount of money, most of the time more than an over the road trucking company would pay you um, and still be able to reach your goals in you know, the next five years or so. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this video off on that note and uh, hopefully this video brought you some more information that maybe you were curious about how, uh, how we make so many hours out here. And um, you know, I hope you guys are having a great day also, keep commenting, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and uh, make sure you hit the like button. Until next time, keep it between the ditches.